Welcome to a new Intersub tutorial about how to prepare a local Nexus Artifact Repository server. In this tutorial, we want to prepare a local Artifact Repository server, a central tool to deploy servers in a CI environment, such as needed for the Intersub commerce management. The setup of a CI infrastructure with CI server and version control system are not part of this tutorial. The following Artifact Repository servers are available and work with the Intershop Continuous Delivery Tools. The Sonotype Nexus, the JFOG Artifactory and the Apache Archiver. For the server configuration, we refer to the cookbook Setup CI Infrastructure, which of course is provided in our Intershop knowledge base. In this tutorial, we already installed and started the Artifact Repository Sonotype Nexus. Right after the installation, the Nexus already provides several hosted, proxy and group repositories. In our first step, we add further repositories that are necessary for the deployment of an Intershop server and for build and publish processes. Therefore, we open the recipe Configure Artifact Repository Server within the cookbook Setup CI Infrastructure. Under Configuration Steps, you'll find a table listing all necessary repositories that need to be created and configured. For the Sonotype Nexus, you will find a prepared example within the recipe. According to this, we create and configure the listed repositories. We start with all proxy repositories. We enter the ID, the name, and the remote storage location from JCenter and Intershop. Intershop IV and Intershop Maven are no longer relevant, as everything necessary is already included in the Intershop repository. You need an authentication for the Intershop proxy repository. The login and username are to be found in the support contract details. Please note, make sure that discovery is unchecked in the routing tab. The next step is to create all needed hosted repositories. The releases and snapshots already exist. Therefore, we only need to create the distributions repository. In the last step, we create the repository components and switch the needed repository from available repositories to ordered group repositories in the following order. JCenter, Intershop, Releases and Central. If everything is configured correctly, every repository is stated as in-service. Then the creation and configuration of every repository is complete. Please note, all hosted repositories are currently empty. To use the Nexus for the Intershop deployment, we recommend to create a new Nexus user. Our Nexus user is ISH Deploy. Please follow our cookbook to create this deploy user. In the next step, we create the sources from Intershop templates to upload specifics to the Nexus. For this task, we use the recipe Create Sources from Intershop Templates. Use the URL to download the master template zip file via browser or command line. Then we unzip the template. Now we leave the terminal to switch to the unzip templates directory. Here, we open the build.gradle file, which needs modifications. All to-dos are to be checked and modified. Here, we define our setup directory in an absolute path. It's necessary to define a repository base URL. In our example, it's a pre-configured local Nexus server. Be sure to enter your own Nexus URL here. In our tutorial, we define a project name, a responsive. This can be chosen freely. Then, save the file, close it and open a terminal in this directory in order to generate all source artifacts. Therefore, execute the Gradle task Intershop CI Setup All. Please note, always pay attention to the correct spelling of the tasks. Leave the terminal. We now have a new user home directory called Intershop CI Setup Source. Within this folder, scripts, configuration files and also some basic source artifacts are located. Currently, the configuration files are only locally available, but they are also accessible in the SCI environment via the artifact repository. The corporate distribution 
is located and accessible via the folder structure in the Intershop CI Setup source folder. Our next step is to publish the corporate distribution on our Nexus. To do so, we open the Cradle project and execute a simple publish. Therefore, we first disable the source control management plugin in the build Gradle. Based on the use SCM, this plugin provides project configuration handling and specific tasks regarding the version handling of the project. Here, we see the initial version that we are going to publish later. Now, we execute the following commands with special configuration parameters to publish the corporate distribution on the Nexus. This must be true if the project is used on a CI server. This is the release repository in which the build artifacts are uploaded. Use the created deployment user here. Here is the user password. We need the release extension to define the versions tag as release tag. During the process, the corporate distribution is pulled from the artifactory and stored in the local nexus. Please note, before rebuilding the corporate distribution, always increase the version number. And please note, if you wish to change the artifact name, in this tutorial we use test corporate name, you can simply change it via the artifact ID in the build.gradle. We need the URL of the corporate distribution zip file later in our project as distribution URL in the Gradle wrapper properties files. The next step is to publish the already prepared Oracle project to the Nexus. We prepare the build of the cartridge with the Oracle JDBC driver libraries. You can find these libraries in the Oracle download page or in the Oracle Maven repository. In our tutorial, we have already downloaded the needed files from the Oracle web and copied the files to the respective location. Now we open the Gradle folder in the Oracle directory and paste the distribution URL from the Nexus into the Gradle wrapper properties files. Then we go back and execute the following command. After this step, our tutorial is finished. You now have a prepared artifactory repository that can be used for all build, publish and deployment purposes during your project development. You can now use it to publish or deploy releases and snapshots of your project. It is the central point of entry for build deployment processes. For more information, please take a look into our knowledge base or contact our support team. Thank you for watching and see you next time.